Welcome to episode 85 of the Sports Geek Podcast. On this week's episode, I catch up with Scott Kegley from the San Francisco 49ers at Levi Stadium. Welcome to the Sports Geek Podcast, the podcast built for sports digital and sports business professionals. And now, here's your host who has a voice for podcasts, or is it a head for podcasts? I'm not sure. Sean Callanan. Thanks, DJ Joel. I think sort of a compliment, sort of a backhanded compliment. But then again, I did write them, so I really can't tell you off for that. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Sean Callanan from Sports Geek, and you're listening to the Sports Geek podcast, either on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Audio Boom, or at sportsgeekhq.com. I'm back in Melbourne. Uh, from back from the sports geek trip, two and a half weeks, London, San Francisco, San Diego, and I can't figure out why no one feels sorry for me when I get the flu upon returning to Melbourne. Maybe it was all of those updates uh, from all the terrific venues and people I was meeting with. Uh, so that's why there has been a delay in this podcast. Um, I did lose my voice a little bit upon returning, um, and I want to make sure that Sports Geek Podcast is of the highest quality. Um, on this week's episode, I catch up with Scott Kegley from the San Francisco 49ers. It was good to catch up with him in real life at Levi Stadium um, a week or two ago now um, to talk about what he's been doing at the 49ers around, around the digital efforts, uh, what it's been like moving to Levi Stadium and having a fully tricked out stadium like Levi's is with all the tech, the latest tech tools and tech gadgets there. And also talk about uh, some of the approach that they've taken with specific platforms such as such as Vine. And we talk about how the 40 Viners uh, program or campaign was used to to develop the Vine presence for the, for the 49ers. So I hope you enjoy that. And uh, for those of you who are going to attend seat in July, um, the technology tour of Levi Stadium will be pretty phenomenal. I only had a brief look at it uh, with Scott and then was lucky enough to go to WrestleMania uh, to finish up my trip and see Levi Stadium in action um, and see how it dealt with crowds and uh, some of the things that they did from a technology point of view uh, to make sure people got to their food on and all of that kind of stuff. Um, we'll have a deep dive technology to of Levi Stadium um, kicking off seat uh, on the Sunday That seat kicks off, which is the 19th of July, not long now. So after the interview with Scott, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, what happened while I was in San Francisco and some of the plans we've got for seats in July. Um, I'll also give you some of the highlights from Social Media Marketing World in San Diego. Um, Caught up with a few friends uh, in San Diego for a fun couple of days. Uh, Some of the highlights from that and some uh, some of the key I guess key lessons that I took away from that from uh, some of the some of the leaders in the industry, guys like Pat Flynn, uh, a guy who I credit uh, why I'm doing podcasting uh, after seeing Pat in 2013. I'll get a little bit more review of WrestleMania and also why I've done a complete 180, not a uh, not a Jason Kidd uh, style 360 because that would put me back in the same position, but I've done a pretty much a complete 180. On Snapchat, after playing around with it in London and in San Francisco, and seeing some of the geo filters and the uh, Snapchat stories around big events like WrestleMania, I can really see why uh, sports can use Snapchat, but also why it's on collision course with rights holders in sport. So, without further ado, without further ado, ado, I guess that's right. Um, again, I'm going to half blame my cold. Um, here is my chat with Scott Kegley from the San Francisco 49ers. Very happy to be at Levi Stadium, home of the San Francisco 49ers, in the offices of Scott Kegley, Director of Digital and Social Media for the 49ers. Scott, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, well, looking forward to seat uh, in July and having uh, the 49ers very much involved and we're going to be doing a tour of the technology tour of this stadium first of all tell people 
uh, we've had a we've had a bit of a discussion over lunch. Tell people how your your department is set up and you know how it works from an overall point of view for for the Forty ers Yeah. So what's really unique, kind of about our our digital department and digital team here with the uh, the Forty ers we're all in this under one roof, really, with our production guys and even in stadium guys. Um, so our department's called Forty Nine ers Studios. That's led by our executive producer and vice president Rob Alberino. And essentially, there's three different groups under that main department. Uh, the first being game day production, some of the video board stuff, IPTV, the displays around uh, the stadium. So that's the stuff that we'll be getting on the technology tour, geeking out on all, all of that tech that's been rolled out. Exactly. And there's probably more that they'll tell you that's way over my head because uh, those guys are probably way smarter than I am. Uh, but then the uh, the second part um, of our department, uh, really video production side of things. We have two television shows, uh, The Faithful and 49er Way. Uh, that comes out of that group, um, as well as everything that you see on the web. Uh, we shoot everything in, uh, with Sony F55 cameras, which are just top of the line. Uh, so we're giving you the same quality across, you know, stadium. So yeah, and- so we discussed it earlier. They're producing all the all the stuff for TV, mm-hmm. and effectively you're putting in your request to say we need this stuff for, for Facebook, we need web, this stuff for yeah. the web, we need this stuff for for, for social platforms, mm-hmm. and they're just slicing up that uh, that content for the for the platforms you want them for. Yeah, and it's great because we have weekly meetings with everybody all in one room, so we talk about all those things at the same time. So there's really nothing lost in communication. Um, and then our department is really four things, everything that's digital, uh, our content, uh, we have two writers, um, and then uh, mobile, uh, so our Levi Stadium app and 49ers app, uh, as well as social. So those are kind of the four main things that we're responsible for. And so, yeah, so that digital and social, those, those four things are, are under, your, under your charge. Um, and I want to sort of dive in on, you know, so you go through that breakdown. You've got a couple of beat writers um, and you know you're currently advertising for a, for a social media manager, and I've had a few people who are listeners, uh, you know, ask me about the role. Tell us a little bit about the role, what you're looking for, and what you're trying to skill out the team with. Yeah, so there's a few positions that uh, we're hiring. Uh, you mentioned our writers. We have one senior reporter, and we're hiring for another team reporter position, uh, and so that'll be kind of the content side of things. Uh, we also uh, will have a digital media coordinator um, who will still have a lot of social responsibility still. A uh, lot of execution stuff. You know, exactly. Once you've rolled out, you, there's all the, all the different platforms mm-hmm. that have to be serviced. Yeah, so he'll be starting uh, in just a couple of weeks here in April 13th. So uh, the last position we really have to, to fill is that social media manager role um, and really a focus on, I guess, a lot of different things. But Part of it uh, being the community management side of things. Yep. Uh, part of it being uh, getting you know all entities, uh, social entities within the organization kind of on the, the same page with everything too uh, as we really just become more efficient and effective uh, with what we're doing on social media. So whether that's advertising, helping out um, you know our team store with certain things or Levi's Stadium events – Kind of helping as an internal consultant of yep. sorts uh, for some of the other groups, uh, as well as helping out with all the the Forty Nine ers social channels. Because that's the thing, you've got multiple. You know, sports teams have these you know multiple competing departments uh, that do want access to to social um, and and the opportunities that are, that it arise, and you need someone internally. And normally they're sort of based in the content mm-hmm. team, so they're in that broadcast mode of getting our stuff out the door and, and engaging our fans. But yeah, you've got your team store. You might have uh, ticket sales, probably not in this sense because you've mm. got the high demand, but you've got also, you know, sponsorship activations and exactly. how can they be best tweaked for, for particular platforms because, you know, something that might work well on Facebook might work better on, on Instagram or be better engaging, uh, you know, it, via Twitter and those kind of things. So that's what you want that sort of role to, uh, for that person to be to both help manage the platforms but also give a bit of insight on where they should mm-hmm. go and how they should be used. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of why I've you know, refer to it as a internal consultant of yep. sorts um, to, to help out those other groups in terms of developing our, our overall strategy. I think it's uh, it would be a tough task to have one person be in charge of all of those things. Um, so we're not taking over what they're doing on, on the marketing side of things because those guys know uh, their business better than anybody else's. So it's really just to be able to empower them with the tools that they need to be even more successful than they already are. So diving in on one of the platforms that uh, that I think you guys do, you know, really well, um, and it's it's something that is obviously 
I think it's more uh, US focused. Just from you know my look at the global game is that Vine is it's a different beast over here, and all my, you know I think a lot of that is actually driven out of San Francisco, mm-hmm. being really close to you know Silicon Valley and stuff like that. T- take us through I guess what you've got, what you guys have done with Vine, and and sort of how that's grown for you guys. Yeah, that was a, a huge program for us uh, last year during the 2014 season. Uh, but we came up with the concept of the 40 Viners. We started experimenting uh, with some fun, kind of quirky vines uh, at the end of, I guess, the 2013 season. And uh, 40 Viners was kind of born out of that. And we, we started to realize that that was a concept that was going to gonna work well and, and play well. So we started spending the entire offseason figuring out how we were going to execute this. We had this name. We had this concept. Uh, we needed to find the best fine artist in the business. And we had one up in San Francisco uh, in Ian Padram uh, and we're able to work with him. Uh, and then ultimately we wanted to bring a sponsor to the table as well. Um, and so Levi's kind of became uh, apparent that that was going to be the, the perfect uh, partner for the program. They really wanted to be able to do something unique and different. And they've yep. been amazing to work with. Um, and so on that was, you know, coming up with the, the concept and then saying, how are we going to go about doing it? How much of it was driven by landing landing the sponsor and how much of it was driven by, you know, getting access to a Vine artist? And that's, you know, when you do get into the platform of Vine, there are people who mm-hmm. are absolutely killing it. And, Ian, you know, Ian is at the, you know, at the very top yeah. of his game. Are they giving out Vine Oscars yet? We're not, we can't be too far, but, you know. Shorty Awards, I yeah. think. There's some Shorty Awards. And I think we're, we applied for one, so we'll see, uh, how you know, how that goes. But, um you know, definitely Ian's the best in the business. And I think it was really wasn't a case of, okay, can we get the Vine artist on board or can we get the sponsor on board? Um, it was really, we have this idea. Let's figure out how to make this work and yep. how to make it feasible. And what are we going to be doing? And he lives in San Francisco. The stadium's, you know, 45 minutes south in Santa Clara. Um, how are we going to make all this work and viable on, you know, a weekly schedule what are we going to be doing for home games away games it was really an in-season concept um it took us until the week of our first preseason game against the baltimore ravens for that all to kind of come together the contracts were signed and we're going with it but there was a lot of setup so i mean it really was almost a six-month process probably by the time we got it going um, it took all all off season, but it, we saw it as an opportunity to really do something different that a lot of teams weren't doing. And I thought Vine was kind of an untapped platform for that. Um, it's been around for a couple of years, and I think people or sports teams in general, outside of just you know warm taking up the, vines yeah. or taking the field, and you know those are those are great things. Don't don't discount them. Yeah, because you want to have that insider access. Yeah. Uh, insider access, that kind of stuff. But uh, what I really liked what you guys did um, is very similar to, you know, talking to Rich Clark, who was then at, at, at Arsenal, of having a, a set strategy to go, we're going to mm-hmm. tackle this platform and tackle it with content that's native to this platform, you know. If you go to all the, you know, if you go talk to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and that kind of stuff, they all want mm-hmm. content that's specific for it. If you're just posting the stuff that's everywhere else, there's no driver, there's no reason to be there. And, you know, I'm sure you've got uh, people following your Vines that aren't 49ers fans, but they're fans of Vine mm-hmm. and they're fans of the art, like you said, the art form. And you want to be in in that space. Obviously, you're still, you know, your core fan is who your main market is, but you want to provide content specific to that platform that people want to engage with. And that's where I thought the whole 40, uh, 40 Viners uh, idea was, was really good because then you've got something set and you go, there, there's our Vine game plan. That's what we're going to do. We've got, you know, we know what we're doing from week to week and it's sort of set and then it's just a matter of you just tweaking the model and seeing what opportunities that you can do going forward. Yeah, and Vine's Vine's just such a different medium too. What magic can you make happen in six seconds was kind of our our strategy for it. I mean, you're not going to be posting the same thing that you would on Twitter. It's not linking back to content. Like, let's just create great content. And ultimately... Uh, you mentioned it too in terms of getting outside the scope of your, your hardcore fans are always going to be kind of your hardcore fans. Yep. How do we how do we broaden the scope of who we are reaching and how do we make football uh, meaningful to probably these artists who are on the platform? Um, and it was it was interesting early on. I think it was a preseason game, um, and we'd only posted a couple of forty viners vines at this time, uh, but there's a fan on Twitter. 
uh, who replied to one of the vines and said, I may be a at Steelers fan, but now I'm following the app 49ers just because of hashtag 40 viners. Yep. So we responded to him right away and said, Hey, the more you're more, the merrier, you know, come on board and, you know, love that, you know, be welcoming new fans. And to me, that was, uh, and then the week after that, it was week one and we were recognized at Dallas Cowboys stadium, uh, by a member of the Cowboys grounds crew. Uh, I was taking a vine before that game and said, are you with the 40 viners? Yeah. I was like, how, we've been doing this for yeah. four weeks. How, yeah. how do you know about this already? Um, so we just knew that it was going to be something powerful and something, you know, truly unique and, and kind of a, kind of a first a little bit, a fairly original idea. Yeah. And that, and the important thing there is again, uh, from my discussions at seat, seat London and the panel I had with Richard Ayres, you know, we did discuss on our panel the importance of targeting those different fans. Like you can't just always be mm-hmm. targeting, you know, and I used it in Seat Miami. I used uh, David Putty from Seinfeld as my, you know, the hardcore fan with the face paint on. You can't keep going to the David Putties of the world. Yeah. You know, Vine allows you to get some of those casual fans and who knows, it might get that fan more engaged with the 49ers, might then lead to mm-hmm. another part of your role and getting people to download the app or consuming more content or yeah. tuning in on the TV because they're all they're all goals for you you know in in the end and and that's the opportunity when you have a, a set strategy around a specific platform that that can you know um, you know get some wins it's you know it's really really valuable and it gets you outside of, of just wins and losses uh, sports teams I think will always be dependent on record and team performance and those are things yep. uh, as somebody who does digital and social media you have zero impact on. Um, but you also have to communicate your message uh, to fans. Um, and even if that's after a loss and it's a, a negative uh, time of the year or a negative time in your team's news cycle, yeah. um, those are ways that you can still create compelling content. Um, you know, And I think you have to be able to, I always say, you have to be able to capitalize on wins when they happen. Yeah. Uh, in the NFL, we have 16 games. Uh, but if you look towards the other leagues, I mean, even um, like I loved what the, the Philadelphia 76ers did for their first win. Yep. They just embraced it. They'd gone so many games without getting their first win. Uh, but just kind of laugh at yourself. Have fun with it. Make yeah. it a big deal um, when that happens. And I think just kind of being open and transparent and just creating good content I think fans are going to respect that and they're going to open up to it and you're going to have more opportunities for those wins. They may not come as often when you're not successful on the field, but you really have to be able to set up and capitalize on them. Uh, and, you know, 40 Viners was was definitely something that we were able to utilize for that as well. Yeah, um, you know, Brian Sarabian jokes about uh, the best marketing strategy is winning a World Series, Yeah, right? And the lucky thing for him is that they keep winning. But, uh, yeah. but, uh, but keep the, doing it, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, it is a matter of getting your team and your, mm-hmm. both your team internally, but also your fans ready for when that opportunity happens. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we talked earlier, uh, at lunch around how the NFL is such, it's event. Every game, it is an event. And even, you know, it can be a, a touchdown run or a, or a two minute drill comeback. Like they are massive events mm-hmm. that your, your team by putting out the right content, putting out the right tone on the right network, can you know the fans just want to be part of it and so mm-hmm. it's a matter of you know training your fans for that moment to go this is the moment guys go yeah and whether it's revining whether it's retweeting whether it's using a hashtag or whether it's you mm-hmm. know taking a selfie uh, you know, when you're on the field like that's that's your you know that's what yeah. we do every day you've got to try to train those fans to do exactly what you want yeah and when we did have that opportunity and we're very close to uh winning the ultimate prize uh what we did uh, for our Super Bowl run season was we created the quest for six. Yep. Um, and that was actually something that we, you know, kind of saw happening like on social and fans responding positively to that. And when you can take it as a team and, and really run with it, um, you know, our fans are still tweeting about it and it's kind of more of a playoff thing for us. Um, so it's interesting to see, you know, the fans still using it and um, being able to see the, um, and how it translates to kind of to the physical space on yep. rally towels. And we um, had quest for six flags down in New Orleans. And it's it's great to see those then uh, just a hashtag that you created online on Twitter. And now it's on Bourbon Street. Well, um, that's that's cool. the thing. I mean, that's the power of listening. You know, mm-hmm. and you listen, if you listen to you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, he still says, go out there and listen to what your fans are saying. Sports no different. If, you know, if the fans are driving something like quest for six and, you know, John McCauley saw the same thing with We the North 
with mm-hmm. the Toronto Very Raptors, cool. right? Yeah. They were, they were that, that plan, that marketing plan, which is what it was, you know, was getting ready to be rolled out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they started going on a run and this movement came and they went, let's pull the trigger, let's go early. And mm-hmm. it just became something bigger than they could ever believe. And it becomes, you know, it becomes a secondary brand. It becomes a sub-brand that mm-hmm. now you can grab at any point, you know, now yeah. it's a... You know, now it's like a way of life in Toronto. And, you know, and that's the thing. You now know this quest for six is it's almost sitting there. It's in your toolkit mm-hmm. of when you can pull it out at any, at any point. Hopefully, you know, you get to pull it out again for this season and, and, you know, ride, ride the wave, so to speak. And it's really important to, to let the fans feel like they've, like they've owned it or even mm-hmm. they've come up with it. And, you know, then it yeah. has no problems or it. Whereas if you try to, you know, try to force it and it's not getting accepted, sometimes it's better just to let it, let it go because, you really want the fans to own it. Yeah, and I think that's what social can really do, uh, social and digital can really do, is because they can take a lot of those marketing campaigns that, okay, you see it on a billboard or, you know, you're told to use this. Uh, fans don't really want to hear that. They kind of just want it to be cool already. Yep. Um, that's We were talking about 49ers Invasion, which was our campaign for uh, fans who travel on the road, really yep. – um, really so being road, a, road warriors, you know, exactly. But, yeah. yeah. And so really be able to give them an identity because we want to, that helps from a football standpoint as well. Let's go in and let's, you know, make our presence known in the, uh, the road games that we have that year. And, uh, that's something our fans already do very, very well. They travel extremely well. Um, and so, so we're able was, to give them an identity. Yeah. So what were the calls to action around that, at 49ers invasion? What were you asking fans to do? It was simple. All you had to do was tweet at us and use the hashtag and you got a customized note. Uh, we worked with a company called Digigraph. Yep. Um, so, uh, people probably listening to this podcast were very familiar with what us soccer did. Yep. Um, so it was somewhere along the same vein. Um, and we were basically selling t-shirts and yep. hoodies that people could have on the road. Um, and as well as just get people to talk about it and give yep. them an identity. But yep. then there was also a little bit of a payoff at the end. Uh, and it was very cool. We started it um, four or five weeks into the season was the time we finally got it off the ground. Uh, we were also launching a stadium at the time, so we were a little bit behind. Things, things were busy. Yeah, so was, <laughs> we were behind the eight ball a little bit. Um, but it was amazing by the time and just after kind of the halfway part of the season, uh, we were – in New York, and we saw one of the 49ers Invasion t-shirts outside of the bus. Yep. And it was like, I saw one, I saw a person in their natural habitat, you know, and <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just very cool to see that that adoption and see him, see him growing, and we're already working on concepts for how that program is going to grow and evolve in, in year two, and I think fans will be pretty excited by what they see from that as well. Yeah, I really liked, um, I actually used the US Soccer Digigraph example um, in my uh, keynote at uh, mm-hmm. Seat Miami because I, I think as much as the, you know, getting a little photo or image back, if you can drive it back to something physical, yeah. obviously then it helps ROI. If you go, hey, look how many T-shirts mm-hmm. we've sold. Like it's, you know, it's yeah. far easier to say, oh, there's the cost for, uh, cost for a tweet or, you know, we're mm-hmm. actually getting some money back. Um, but then I completely agree. When you see... You know your your work out in the wild, like mm-hmm. you see someone with a, t- a t-shirt with a hashtag on it, yeah. or they're they're taking a selfie because you know you as a team have told them take this photo in front of this, and we're we're doing that. That that's the you know, you're still got to go out there and be amongst the fans to see them doing it. But it's uh yeah, it's a bit of a buzz when you when you see it actually happening in real life. Yeah, and we'll see how that that program kind of grows to this next year as we. Uh, we saw the success, and now that's the challenge, right? You have to figure out how to expand it, and make it bigger and, and better, and and evolve. And any of these concepts, I think you initially think, you know, year one, what are we going to do? Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, we did the same thing with Forty Viners, and and hopefully, uh, we'll be able to grow that program as well. But really, it was kind of a five year plan. Yeah. Um. You know, what is it going to look like in five years? And there's still so many things that we even wanted to do in year one that we didn't do. Yeah. Um. And so I think it's it's always being able to like a really good plan for digital uh, doesn't just have a one year shelf life or one week's shelf life. But, you know, any of the campaigns that we do overall and it's how do we grow this? How do we make this bigger over time? And it's got to be you've got to it's got to be agile and adaptable because, you know, if you were to have a five year, you know, if I was to start a five year plan when I started Sports Geek, like there's there's platforms that didn't even exist. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and you're seeing things like. uh you know, Snapchat jump up um, and that kind of thing that you that, that you can't plan for, but you have to be adaptable to go, is this where our fans are? Is it worthwhile as, as being in that space? 
Um, it's something that's you know super important. One thing I did want to just, uh, quickly chat on, and we chatted about earlier, is the getting the inter- uh, getting the departments working together collaboratively. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm a massive uh, massive fan of uh, uh, Slack, and you guys use Slack as well. How have you found that from a collaborative tool to get those one three departments working both, and then also how it um, using it on a, on a game day point of view. Yeah. Um, well, we, we love Slack. Uh, we use it in our digital team or well, really our whole 49er studios team. So we're communicating about social content, um, communicating about digital stories. We edit all the stories and approve everything that goes up. Uh, we know which images people are using. So we don't double dip on social as yep. people are, kind of going back and forth. Uh, and then on game days too, specifically, it's a huge help because uh, we have one channel with our marketing group. Um, and first of all, we didn't talk about this at lunch, but we also have the best creative team, I believe, in all of professional sports. Yep. Um, you know, our senior creative services ma- manager, uh, Ben Mayberry, is fantastic. Yep. Um, and so we're constantly talking about look and feel and treatments. And, and brand and, and Yeah, stuff and kind of, yep. you know, for instance, you know, I used to be a part of the marketing group and, yep. and worked uh, very closely with those guys when we were talking about Quest for Six or this 49ers invasion campaign. Uh, it was everybody kind of in one room uh, figuring this stuff out. But then, you know, for game day, uh, the images are coming in. We're getting some from our photographer on the field. They're giving us a lot of options for Instagram and and social, and we can tweet links to stories that we do or highlights that are up. And the and the part that uh, so the use case, and again, if I put in my my geeky geek hat back on, you know, the use case of Slack, um, especially because you know, a big part of your your job is content. Mm-hmm. And so you know, a breaking story happens, and you know, it's your your job to be on top of that. If it's especially if it's based around you know the 49ers, mm-hmm. it's you know you've got to get all your guys in and and yeah. you know you were talking about how slack is really important that it, whether it's eight o'clock at night and some stories broke you yeah. your writers you know some of your content team are all on slack chipping in on how the story will uh, you know get run on the side what you want to put out on social mm-hmm. and you can have that conversation in slack you know real yeah. time know that everyone's online get that story out because in the content game you know you are competing against espn and fox and all the you know all the media players you want to get your take out quickly and slack's really helped shorten that uh, cycle for you guys yeah absolutely and uh just real world example uh, myself and our digital strategist eric stark uh we're in uh salt lake city for the adobe digital summit yep the week uh free agency started we signed uh tory smith and patrick willis also uh, had his retirement press conference. So Eric and I were working uh, outside. We missed some of the morning sessions uh, for that conference, but we're able to to be online and still communicating effectively with everybody, uh, editing images, sharing them back and forth, working with our marketing team in terms of the graphics to announce yep. uh, Tori signing as well as all the, the you know, farewell Pat uh, content, um, which was great to see that kind of start trending. Uh, but you have, you know, a fairly small team still, you know, from uh, the digital side of things dispersed in different time zones and events happening live back here. Uh, and so we were still able to get all that done. That was the first uh, press conference that we were able to stream live on our 49ers app yep. as well. So we were kind of crossing our fingers and hoping that went okay. And yep. Slack uh, kind of helped us to uh, feel a little bit more comfortable about that. Well, I know you've got a meeting coming up, so we've got to wrap this up. But um, I do have to finish this uh, interview because I am from Australia Mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much we open the paper every day and we're hearing more about how Jared Hayne, Mm -hmm. uh, former Parramatta Eel, so uh, the current, by the best way to put it, is one of the best players in the NRL, has uh, uh, quit the NRL and has been signed by the the 49ers. you know, one, and again, you obviously don't know him and all that kind of thing, but from a content point of view, is there ways that you're looking to, to leverage Jared uh, back in Australia and, and what kind of interest is there in, in him in the US? Yeah, and definitely would love to uh, to talk to him about some of that uh, when he's out here as well. I mean, I think it's a it's a huge opportunity for, for our brand, for, for our team. Um, obviously, uh, one of the things that we did uh, is we targeted – a Facebook post, just uh, Australian was, what should we know about this guy, essentially, um, to try to put it into context. Yep. So we took all those those comments and put those in a story, and this is who this guy is. And yep. it was the 
Babe Ruth of the rugby league. Right? So, so the example I'm giving uh, that I gave you is, is, and you know, for the US markets, the best example I have is you know Michael Jordan leaving basketball mm-hmm. to go play baseball. Yeah, like you know he is at the top of his game in the NRL, and you know you've got some clips from Matt Henry and the guys at yeah. the, the NRL that you were sending back. You know, yeah, via thanks Facebook. for sending those over, by the way. <laughs> yeah, much so, appreciated. So, so those guys, know, you know, so you can see what an athlete he is, but. And yeah, pretty much. I think uh, a, a show, uh, Instagram photo from Colin Kaepernick's mm-hmm. Instagram feed ended up in the back page of the paper. Oh, cool. uh, so you know, uh, you'll you'll probably have to start getting a little Australian media feed because yeah. anytime he gets a mention, you're in the paper. So <laughs> I don't think you'll have any problems getting any getting any coverage because a lot of Australia is following his story and and hope him all su- every success with the 49ers. Yeah, and if you just watch his clips online, I mean. It- He's going to be hard to tackle, I'll tell you that much. And just seeing everything that Matt sent over, um, it was amazing to watch. So it'll be interesting to see him uh, come out here and try to make the squad. And I think everybody will be interested in him. And even the sentiment over here in the U.S., I mean, I don't think people really know who he is or yep. what to expect, but they're intrigued. But um, I'm sure if you uh, if you talk to your, your colleagues at the Warriors, yeah. uh, you know, with Andrew yeah. Bogut Andrew on Bogut that. reached out to him, yeah. Andrew Bogut on the uh, on the Warriors, and even when Andrew Bogut was in the Bucks, um, the amount of traffic their website was getting from mm-hmm. from Australia. And I don't know if you've seen those numbers yet, but like you will, you will start seeing. You know, NFL is a is a massive game in in Australia, so there are multiple fans of multiple teams. But I can tell you now that uh, people will be downloading the 49ers app and checking out 49ers dot com for uh, for keeping track of Jared Haynes. So. Yeah, we love it. All the best for the season ahead and looking forward to having you involved with SEAT uh, in July when we're back in San Francisco. Yeah, very much look forward to it and I can't wait to see you guys uh, when you're back out here. Sign up for the Sports Geek News at sportsgeekhq.com slash SGN. Thanks again to Scott Kegley there. Uh, You can follow Scott on the Twitters at Scott Kegley. Again, the easiest way, uh, it's the best way to get your get your own name on Twitter. I'm a big, big fan of that. If, you, uh, if you're lucky enough or quick enough to be able to get your own name on Twitter, it's probably one of the best brand protection strategies there is. Um, what did you think of um, Scott's, both the, uh, the 40 Viners strategy um, and the way that went about making sure that the, the content on that platform was unique and really pitched to the, to the Vine community? Um, I think it was a really effective way um, of using of using Vine, and also, you know, what do you think of Levi Stadium so far? Uh, have you been lucky enough to be go there? Um, really, really impressed by what Chris Giles said at Seat London. He was one of the closing keynote speakers at Seat London and went through some of the some of the technology. Uh, I was lucky enough to see it in action. Uh, the Kiesel Towers, I think they're going to be called. Uh, I'll probably get that. Probably get that wrong. Apologies, Chris, but uh, the ticket scanning device. So you scan your ticket, and rather than a gate there or an, or an usher being right there, the the tower lights up um, with a different colour. Green being yes, you're good to go, sir. Uh, red being you've got an invalid ticket. Get out of my stadium. Um, but then they've got other colours, and the ushers will then see that colour. And if it's blue, then you've been rewarded, and you'll get upgraded to a. Uh, to a specific experience. So really, really some great tech there. Um, looking forward to seeing more of it in action and didn't get to see, didn't get to do a full tour when I'd caught up with Scott because they were setting up for WrestleMania and they did not allow any photos. I was really tempted to take a photo of the sign that said, please don't take any photos, but I'm just too good. Um, I, follow, I follow directions really well. Um, but trust me, those signs were up. Um, so other parts of the San Francisco trip and other highlights, I was uh, lucky enough to catch up uh, with Bill Schlauer from the San Francisco Giants, um, CEO of the Giants, sorry, CIO, uh, head of all the tech at uh, AT&T Park. And as I said to Bill when we caught up for lunch and uh, at a very picturesque venue, have it sitting in the stands uh, at AT&T Park for, for, a, for a bite to lunch, bite of lunch, um, very picturesque place to have, to have lunch. AT&T Park is a stadium that I love. As a sports geek, um, you know all the all the technology that stadiums like Levi's Stadium are rolling out. Bill's been across and rolled out at AT and T many years ago. Um, so I had a really good chat with with Bill uh, about again what his role is and what he's looking to do going forward. Um, I'm going to get Bill on the podcast, and we'll see how much of that 
he'll uh, he'll reveal on the podcast. But always an interesting bloke to catch up with, and looking forward to catch up with him at Seat in San Francisco because we'll be playing a softball t- soft ball tournament. Uh, we're going to put pit all the uh, the tracks uh, against one another and have a hit of the old a hit of baseball, a hit of softball on the field. So how cool is that? So I'll be heading up the team digital. Um, and I'm looking forward to taking down the CRM team uh, with captains like uh, Russell Scabetti, uh, former podcast guest and uh, runner of SB Week. I'll be taking down the CRM team and I'll be looking to take down Todd Kaflish and the IT team as well. So get behind Team Digital uh, for, for, for the seat softball tournament at at and on the Tuesday night. It'll be a terrific event to wrap up uh, seats in July. Uh, it was also good to catch up with uh, Jonathan Martinez from the from the Raiders as well to hear what they're what they're doing. Uh, I'm going to uh, tap Jonathan on the shoulder and we're going to have a chat on the, on a future podcast as well, talking about what the Raiders are planning to do and what they're looking to do to to re- revamp and re- revolutionise what they're doing in digital and to reach out to to more fans. Um, and then you know going back to uh, finishing off my trip at WrestleMania. And I'll include in the sounds of the game uh, uh, The Rock uh, making an unexpected but maybe expected appearance. Everyone seemed surprised um, at WrestleMania. Um, got everyone excited. The Rocky chant rang around uh, Levi Stadium. <laughs> It really was a phenomenal live experience, um, and that's something that WWE do do very well. Um, Seventy six odd thousand people in attendance. Uh, we were lucky enough to have access to the Levi Club, um, which was a club bar, um, obviously fitted out with Levi's, all the staff wearing Levi's, uh, that kind of thing. Um, great access to different different bars and different foods. Uh, terrific venue. Uh, the only thing I thought was that was a little bit strange with the amount of people there was the amount of merchandise that uh, the guys at WWE ran out of. Um, I would have thought in this day and age they would have better projected how much merchandise they would have sold on the day. But uh, if that's my only downer for for that for that event, uh, not much more. Um, one thing I did want to talk about um, is you know, Snapchat. And I've been playing around with Snapchat. You can add me. Uh, Sean Callanan, funnily enough, is is my Snapchat handle. And I'm slowly building up a list of pro teams who are using pro teams and leagues that are using Snapchat. I'm going to publish that list uh, shortly. Um, just playing around with it, seeing how teams are using it. The Snapchat story is really a, a groundbreaker for me. Um, in that it, one, allows you to share uh, snippets of game day, snippets of, of non-game day, and share them with your fans and, and get, them fired, get them fired up. But I think the real piece that is really, uh, really key for Snapchat is this uh, Snapchat stories that are around, that are geo-filtered. Uh, so what I was able to do when I was at WrestleMania, as I was taking some snaps, and I'll, I'll share some of the snaps um, that I shared from WrestleMania in, in this post. Um, but what I was able to do is both add it to my story so people were able to see my story at WrestleMania um, and as a, as a video form going through, seeing here's a picture, here's some video, that kind of thing. But I was also able to add it to the WrestleMania story from everybody. And um, if you're on Snapchat, get on and check out these live events, especially around big games, um, that these curated stories from from the crowd, from the fans' point of view, are a completely different way to consume uh, a sports event. And so while I was away, I was I was seeing the Cricket World Cup and the coverage of that via Snapchat, and it was all from the stands. It was all fans jumping up and down. It was really feeling the emotion. One of the things that we're always looking to do with with clients in working on what they're trying to get to, one of the big drivers is we want more people in the stadium. You know, the cheeks on the seats is the phrase that, I, that I've, I've taken on board um, after talking to Katie Morgan from the Texas Rangers. Um, and I think 
Snapchat helps drive that FOMO mentality, fear of missing out. I need to be at the stadium. Um, because you're seeing this raw emotion, this shared experience from the Snapchat stories. So hoping to talk to some of the guys from Snapchat uh, on a future episode, but also get them to see. I think there's a real opportunity there to help sell the story um, and tell the story, not just sell the story, but tell the story around your stadium and around your, your events. Um, from a conflict point of view, um, obviously there is diametrically opposed in the other corner, if we do it WrestleMania style, is the TV and digital rights holders. So where do they fit? Where do they sit with Snapchat? And we can also chuck in Meerkat and Periscope into this equation, this live streaming or near live streaming or live event uh, video, where are the big players going to going to sit to say, we don't want this, we don't want this action? And then the other, the other part, and, you know, guys like Bill Schlaw at the Giants have to solve as well, as more fans want to share this content, whether it's a small video on Snapchat or potentially live stream with Meerkat and Periscope, what's going to happen to, to Wi-Fi capacity and things like that as people want to share more and more video? Obviously, that's going to be a concern. I'm no doubt talking to some of the people from the seat steering committee. I, I have no doubt we'll have a panel that's, that's pretty much based around that probably get the IT guys involved and the digital guys involved and say, look, we've got these cool tools, the fans want to use them, but they're going to smash the Wi-Fi and smash the DAS and, and really make uh, the experience a lesser for, for other participants. So big discussion point. I love your feedback. Um, either send me a tweet at Sean Callanan or at Sports Geek. Um, have, yeah, join in the discussion or, you know, you can join – our Facebook group, if you go facebook.com slash groups slash sportsgeek, I believe it is. And if not, just email me, Sean at SportsGeekHQ, and I'll add you to that group because I think it's a really important discussion to find out um, where it's going to fit uh, in the world of sports. Um, from social media marketing world, um, for those of you who have followed what I've been doing for a couple of years, know that I went uh, to social media marketing world in, in 2013. And going back two years later, um, I felt it was very similar to 2013 uh, and probably a little bit too similar. Um, I was actually looking for a little bit more deep dive uh, advanced topics and there was, it was a little bit too, um, I guess, early early, um, and uh, people new to the, new to the scene um, and a lot of people selling from the stage, which was some of the, one of the down points from it. Um, but... You know, some of the guys that I did meet and, and hear in 2013 uh, d- delivered quality presentations once again. Um, John Luma, um, who is, you know, in my mind, one of the best guys from a Facebook ads point of view. I, I listen and follow, follow John's stuff closely on trying to figure out how um, we can better serve sports, the sports industry using Facebook and Facebook ads. Um, John did a quality presentation on a few experiments that he's done on the on Facebook ads. Um, looking forward to getting John on the show in the future. Um, and Pat Flynn and Jay Bear, um, I really rate these guys. Um, if you're not following their stuff, um, either in a podcast form or blogs, then you're not really keeping up with what's happening in the latest in um, digital marketing and content marketing and, and podcasting to a certain degree. But both Pat and Jay... Did a great did a great job. I was really encouraged by a, a podcasting panel uh, with uh, Jesse Thorne, Norm Paddits, and Tom Merritt, and it was one of the one of the panels that actually did deep dive. Norm Paddis is uh, the CEO of Podcast One, which is one of the largest podcast networks in the US. Um, and it was a real deep dive on you know where podcasting is going, what the impact of of podcasts like Serial have had on the podcasting industry and the fact that uh, large media players are starting to take podcasting uh, serious uh, as far as a serious medium form and also a, a serious form for, for advertising, which is definitely the, the angle that, uh, that Norm brought to the panel. Um, also, some, uh, also great to catch up with some people in sports. Peter Stringer, former podcast guest from the Boston Celtics, was spending some time in San Diego and spoke on a few panels. So it was good to catch up with, with Pete, and also good to meet Joel Price from the San Diego Chargers um, and hear his thoughts on how to best use Facebook uh, from, a, from a sporting team point of view. 
and I'm looking forward to catching up with Joel again on a future episode. I've, I've banked up a few invites for future episodes, so we won't be having this one week off um, with the amount of interviews that I've got lined up in the next couple of weeks. Um, but the, one of the things that was really good for uh, Social Media Marketing World, Christine uh, Stoffel and, and Kylie Kaflish from, from SEAT uh, came along both to, to learn a little bit around uh, social media and also get a few ideas uh, from a conference point of view to bring across the seat. And I think we did get some really good ideas from a networking event point of view and, and structure and things like that from Social Media Marketing World because Mike Stelzner does run an excellent excellent conference uh, and as far as uh, networking events and those kind of things, absolutely top-notch. Um, so on seat, um, ticket sales are really strong, especially post-seat uh, London. Really encouraged to see uh, people coming uh, people registering from the London event, uh, the feedback that we've been getting post London is what, been, what now been nearly three weeks since um, has been really positive. Um, looking forward to, to bringing over some of the speakers that perform really well uh, at Seat London, but also just getting more of those Seat London attendees to come to, to Seat to just make, give Seat 2015 um, a real international feel. And so part of that international feel is uh, to get more Australians and New Zealanders um, across to seat 2015. And no, I can't pack you in my suitcase. That is not the offer that I'm making here. Um, and I don't think uh, Bodie uh, from New Zealand Warriors, I wouldn't fit you in my in my suitcase. But really, I think you really should all look at the special that Christine has offered Sports Geek listeners and first-time attendees from Australia and New Zealand. Uh, simply go to sportsgeekhq.com slash Seat 2015 Special, and it'll take you straight to the page. Three twenty-five US dollars for your uh, for your registration. If you're a first-time attendee from Australia, New Zealand, you will not get a better rate and a better experience than turning up to Seat. Uh, the technology tour of of Levi playing softball at AT and T Park, um, but you'll also get to meet. Over 100 sports teams, you'll get to meet all the heavy hitters in the sports business, in the industry, around IT, around digital, around CRM. Um, so please, um, if you have any concerns or you need someone to convince your boss, send me an email, sean at sportsgeekhq.com. I'm happy to get on the phone and tell people why they need to be at seat in July. And one last thing, if you are coming from Australia and New Zealand and you want to join my pre-seat trip, I'm locking in the dates, I'm locking in the the meetings and the flights and things like that. So please contact me. Um, Looks like we're going to leave July 14 and have a a four or five action-packed days before hitting San Francisco, Uh, Seattle, Portland and Los Angeles is currently uh, on the agenda. Again, please email me if you're interested in, in doing that and uh, catching up with a few teams just to warm up uh, before before heading to seat in San Francisco. And last but not least, um, I do need a call to action. I am starting to put together my seat 2015 ebook and my seat 2015 keynote of best case studies from around the world. Now, for those of you who were able to attend Miami, luckily enough, my voice did recover for me to, to present this. Um, the Seat 2015 eBooks had over a thousand downloads uh, via the Sports Geek News email list. If you haven't got it, simply go to sportsgeekhq.com/sgn and sign up for the newsletter, and you'll get a link to that to that eBook. Um, I included the Socceroos, the Portland Trailblazers, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, the Miami Hurricanes, uh, and a swag more, the Adelaide Adelaide Crows, uh, US Soccer. Um, there was a stack in that in that case studies. Um, so I need some more. I need some new ones. Um, so if you think uh, that you're something that you've done, uh, whether it be a small campaign uh, around an event like a season launch, like the Tampa Bay Lightning did with Bolts Freeze. Or is it simply something like launch, how you went about launching a platform like the 49ers did with Vine? And there's an example of one that I'll definitely be including in the ebook. As you know, I'll be leaning on my Sports Geek podcast guests, now over 100, 
uh, for these. But please, if you've got a suggestion, either one that you did or one that you really liked, uh, please send me an email, uh, sean at sportsgeekhq.com. Um, I'd love to profile them. I'd love to talk to them uh, a little bit more, maybe on the podcast, queue it up with all of those uh, guests that I have got queued up from the two and a half weeks away. Um, but yeah, I really do. This is my, my call out. If you want to be included in that seat ebook and potentially included in my seat 2015 uh, keynote, uh, looking at best practices in digital, uh, please send me an email, sean at sportsgeekhq.com. Really looking for things that uh, drive results for your business. So whether it be ticketing strategies, um, con- you know, killer content strategies, especially one those that have integrated with sponsors and brought you back some return. Um, and, and as well as, you know, innovative stuff on newer platforms. So what are you doing on Snapchat? Are you potentially doing something on, on these newer newer platforms? How, how are you leveraging them? Um, so it will be a mix. And also don't forget, you know, simple, tried and true uh, email campaigns. If you've done an email campaign recently that absolutely knocked it out of the ballpark, I want those included because I don't want to just stick with the new, brightest, shiniest things. I want to make sure that I'm also focusing on campaigns that absolutely, absolutely killed, even if they're not using the sexiest new platforms anyway thank you very much for listening to this this has been episode 85 Uh, you can find this episode as you can with every episode by just simply putting the number after sportsgeekhq.com slash 85 and you'll get the show notes links to scott kegley on linkedin send him a connection send him a tweet tell him you've listened to the episode um, and if you have listened to, this, listened to this episode and you're running or you're driving, uh, when you do get to your computer, can you please go to sportsgeekhq.com slash iTunes and that will take you straight to the iTunes store. And if you could leave a review, I'd very much appreciate it. Over 67 reviews so far and I'm very appreciative. Thank you, Kim. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you, Tom, for some recent podcasts, uh, podcast reviews. And really, really encourage to see uh, it growing in multiple multiple countries, um, both boosting the boosting the reviews in the US, the UK, Germany, Ireland, Canada. It's one of the good things about uh, iTunes is that you can see them in multiple countries. But the un- the only problem is is that I only see them uh, in in each country in, in using a tool to to scrape them and pull them down. So. 67 overall, thank you very much. If you could leave a review and pass it on to your friends and colleagues. And last but not least, uh, SB Week. Uh, SB Week is happening the week of April 13. Uh, SB Week is being run by Russell Scabetti um, from the business of sports.com. Um, there will be a business of, there will be an SB Week at a city near you. I have no doubt. Russell has done a phenomenal job in organising um, SB Week. I'm trying here to come up with how many cities, um, but there are an SB. There is an SB Week somewhere in the US. Uh, there will also be one in Brazil, Canada, uh, London. There's four in India. I'll be running one in Melbourne at Etihad Stadium on April 13. You can simply go to the Sports Business Melbourne meetup group. Go to meetup.com slash sportsbusinessmelbourne and you'll find that. Very happy to have um, a couple of sponsors. Eddie Had Stadium, obviously. Sarah Brady, thank you very much for hosting us during the evening. The PMY Group, Interact Sport, Interplay Media, they've all donated $250 to the V Foundation for Cancer Research as part of our SB Week. Um, I get very competitive when these things come up and I want to be seen as uh, the SB week that raises the most money. So the sponsors have already kicked it off and got the ball rolling. Uh, $5 from every single attendee will also go to our donation at the end of the week. So if you're in Melbourne and you work in sports business, uh, Monday 13th of April, uh, Eddie Head Stadium is the place to be. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a technology tour of Etihad Stadium with its new Wi-Fi rollout. Um, I'm looking forward to checking it out this weekend. So I'll be able to talk with experience 
um, about how it is going. Um, and also, I'll give a little bit of a recap of how my trip went at SB Week. So, if you're in Melbourne and you work in sports biz or you're in Melbourne and you want to work in sports biz, Sports Business Melbourne Meetup Group for mine, uh, sign up and join. If you can't attend, at least join the group and you will know when our next event is going to happen. Uh, that's it. I think I've done all my calls to action. So send me your case studies around digital activations that you've done in the last 12 months. Sean at sportsgeekhq.com. And until next week, my name is Sean Callanan, and you've been listening to the Sports Geek Podcast. Like the Sports Geek Podcast? Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash sportsgeek. Please leave a review on iTunes. Go to sportsgeekhq.com slash iTunes. Did you know Sports Geek Podcast has listeners in over 50 countries? Thank you for listening to the Sports Geek Podcast.